Welcome to Draw Tip Tuesday. I'm Ko Shikuna and on this channel I share my love for drawing. Hopefully it inspires you on your creative journey. Throughout the years as an artist I have met many other artists and I made a lot of sketcher friends. When I meet up with them I always love seeing their tools and the way they organize them. I have bought so many different pencil cases over the years because of that and every time I think I land on the perfect one until I encounter the next new shiny thing. Today I'd like to share why I think it's important to not just chuck everything into a bag but be a little organized to set yourself up for a fun drawing session. Side note, there might be some noises in this video because my neighbor started to hammer and drill and I don't know what he was doing exactly at the point that I started recording. Oh well, this is how it goes. I hope it's not too annoying or distracting. I'll start with my colored pencils because often when I roll out my colored pencil roll, people exclaim, what? You have your colored pencils organized by color? Indeed I do and I will tell you why. It's not because it looks fun or because I would have OCD or something, but it is to help me grab the right colors when I need them. I used to carry my colored pencils in a pencil bag and I tried quite a few, but I ended up not using my colored pencils as often because it took me too much time to find the color I was looking for. And so often I wouldn't even take them with me. I couldn't be bothered. And that resulted in not getting very familiar with the colors or with the pencils at all, while I really love using them. So when I bought a pencil roll to carry my pencils in, and believe me, I have tried quite a few of these rolls. I was a bit skeptical at first, but wanted to give it a try. It forced me to think about and to choose a palette because only so many pencils fit in a row. I still keep swapping colors every now and then, but this is basically my main palette now. And I already had done that, choosing and selecting colors, for my watercolor palettes. My small palette has the colors in the same order as my other palette. I do this so I always know which color is where, and I don't mix up the darker colors like darker blue and browns. And it really helps me to be more confident about the process if I don't need to think about which color to pick because I know exactly what is in my palette and where. When you know your palette well, it becomes an extension of your artist's tools and you will feel more confident. You know which shade of red you have, for example, and how to mix a warm orange or a cool green or a nice gray. You know the limitations of your palette, but also you know that you love the colors in there and they work for you and that you use all of them. And if that's not the case, rethink it and reorganize your palette. I know many artists who hardly ever clean their palette after or before using it. It works for them, but I wouldn't want to start a fresh drawing and then mixing my fresh new colors on top of the muddy colors that are still left in the mixing area from the last time I used the watercolor palette. You can do what you want, of course, but I say clean your palette. Keep your pigments fresh and clean and wipe out your mixing area. Set yourself up for a fresh start next time. It's easy to do when you're done painting, easier than when you're starting. When you've finished a drawing, the watercolor in the well, in the painting mixing areas, is still wet and you already have a used paper towel in your hand anyway, so use it. If you don't, the mixed paint, the wet mixed paint, may trickle into your pans and dry there, so you'll get muddy pans and therefore muddy paintings and it's just no fun. And let's talk about pens. Before you head out to draw, Fill your fountain pens. Again, you're setting yourself up with enough juicy ink. If I know I am almost out of ink and I'm on location, I kind of hesitate to use that pen or even draw at all, which is crazy because I always have plenty of other art tools with me, but 
that's how the mind works, I guess. I use my fountain pens a lot and I hardly ever clean them. I guess I keep them flowing anyway. I also always have a spare ink cartridge with me for my brush pen. It takes no space at all. I'd also recommend to keep at least a paper towel or a tissue in your sketch kit if you use watercolors. So you can wipe off your brush and keep your hands clean also. And if you use pencils or colored pencils, take a pencil sharpener with you. Maybe you can find one with a container so you don't need to worry about making a mess. If I know I'll be on location where I won't have direct access to a trash can, I have a little Ziploc bag with me to dump my shavings in because I don't want to dump any of my trash in the streets or in nature. It doesn't take any space or weight and it's just there in the side pocket of my pencil bag which is by the way transparent so I can see everything which is also really really handy. In general fill your sketch bag your pencil case with your favorite tools but not all of them. Make a little bit of a selection you can always swap things out every now and then. When you go on location, travel light and also make it easy on yourself to choose your tools when you are starting to draw instead of taking a lot of time deciding what to draw with. If you're worried where to sit when you are on location, I have a really good one. In the back compartment of my backpack, I have this lightweight mat in case I want to sit somewhere to draw. It doesn't weigh a thing. Nine out of ten times I don't even use it, but having it with me helps me to realize that I can draw wherever I want. It's a little reminder and a nudge to myself. And when I use it, I thank myself for bringing it. I think it's a small thing to think about your future self and help your future self. You can thank yourself later. Do all these things, prepare yourself and set yourself up for a fun drawing session. Your assignment for this week is to prepare yourself and then grab your stuff to head out and do a drawing. If drawing on location is not your thing or it's not an option, that's all fine. Draw something at home. Let me know in the comments how you organize your drawing stuff and if you have made any changes lately and why it works for you. I think it can be really helpful for people watching this video and reading the comments to just really learn from each other's habits. It'll be great if you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and also please subscribe to this channel. For more inspiration join me on Patreon. I'll give you even more tips and advice for your sketchbook practice to get you going and to keep you going. You also get to share your thoughts and drawings with me and other patrons and you get a lot more benefits if you join my club. And if you like my style here on Draw Tip Tuesday then check out my workshop schedule and see if you can join one of my classes online or in person. In Malta, France, Italy, Germany, Switzerland, the US to name just a few. And if that's not an option for you, consider buying my book. It's like taking a class with me, only a little bit cheaper and at the comfort of your home and on your very own pace. Links to all of the things I just mentioned are in the description below this video. Have fun drawing! I'll see you next week.